2022 so far to understand the business prospects and a lot more we have with us Mr. Vipul Mathur the managing director and chief executive officer of the company with us in the studio to discuss that uh, Mr. Mathur good afternoon and thank you so much for joining us here it's always great to have these in person conversations and understand the business outlook as well so thanks a lot for joining us thank you and good afternoon to you and generally so uh, your business is into transmission via pipes to oil and gas uh, sector right that is uh, one of the things that you do i wanted to understand fy22 was impacted because of lower oil prices that we had been talking about how are things right now we are seeing oil below the 90 dollar a barrel mark but still it is at a higher level what is the demand looking like and what does it mean for you in terms of fy23 revenue margin guidance so the oil demand seems to be fairly strong the prices seems to be strong the demand seems to be strong and it is uh, pan global you know if, if you look at india if you look at southeast asia if you look at americas i think so the demand is uh, looking good the price is in uh, range bound it is uh, flo floating between 90 dollars to 100 or 100 plus dollars looks like it continues to be the way that's the way it is looking like at this point in time and if that is the case we are seeing uh, a lot of demand coming up for the pipelines you know there has been no capex which has been done over the last couple of years People have completely understood all the, you know, the ENP companies, all mm -hmm. the midstream companies. They have completely understood that this oil and gas infrastructure need to be augmented. And after a long gap, we are seeing a pent-up demand coming up back into that. And that is where we are seeing the future for the pipelines for the next couple of years is going to be looking uh, very bright to us. No signs of slowdown whatsoever? <laughs> we have just come out of a slowdown, <laughs> to be honest. You know, we don't want but to people see... are talking about another slowdown doesn't look that way to be at this point in time if you okay. look at all the indicators what we are watching or what we are monitoring at this point in time looks like this demand for the capex investment into the infrastructure infrastructure segment of oil and gas pipelines is going to be so there for next couple of years prices have dipped to 90 dollars per barrel you're not saying you're not seeing oil and gas companies hold back on their capex because not it's really. not really we are not seeing at this point of time you have to keep in mind that you know for the last three or four years you know, they have not been doing that type yes. of capex which they have been doing traditionally. Yeah. Hmm. So there is a complete backlog which is, hmm. a, you know, which is in place, number one. Number two, people thought that renewable is going to come at the way very fast. It's not happening at the pace hmm. that it should have been happening. So which means that the demand for oil and gas transportation is still going to be there. Hmm. The pipelines would still be required and that is the play we would hmm. continue to enjoy with. Yes, and all the oil and gas companies are talking about higher capex, right? You speak to ONGC, Oil India, all of them are speaking about it. So since things are looking so good demand is strong uh, give us a reason as to what happened in quarter one why did margins fall so much and considering that now you're that you're saying demand is strong what will your margin picture look like in FY 23 and order book at around one thirteen thousand four hundred crore rupees how much is executable in this year itself so quarter one was abnormal you know we have just come out you know there was it was a high it, it there was a huge impact of the commodity pricing the pricing you know we have seen some obnoxious pricing which was happening on the commodity side of it and everyone like us we were impacted because of that uh, in terms of the order book we still have an order book of more than a million tons of a line pipe order book confirmed order book which is almost pegged at uh, 1.6 billion dollars it's a confirmed order book in place and you know that will get executed over next four to five quarters hmm. at this point in time the oh. way the way I see the, the the way I see things moving forward, we are still seeing a huge tailwind in this particular segment, and I'm sure that you know this tailwind will see to us for the next three or four years business sustainability on the line pipe segment side of okay. it. Okay, so exports around fifty percent of the total order book. Close. Will will that that proportion remain? And again, if you're talking about say thirteen thousand four hundred crore rupees of order book, how much can you add on to it? <laughs> Well, uh, <laughs> we still have a capacity available. If you let's let's talk of from a capacity availability perspective, we have assets here in India, we have assets in Saudi, and we have assets in America. Mm -hmm. Our Saudi assets are booked for the full year. Our U.S. assets are completely booked for full year. Right? All what we have a capacity available here in India, and that is what we are trying to augment. So I think so. There will be a significant add-on which we can uh, which which we can build for this particular year. And now our focus has not shifted. To build the capacity and block our capacity for the next financial year as well. Okay. Mm. So, uh, just to understand the overall capacity and the amount that you're capable of, tra you know, carrying. For instance, I think the current order book is thirteen thousand four hundred crore. What is the maximum that you can service by way of an order book? Just to understand. I would say that let's not go by the okay. uh, uh, from a value Number perspective, value. but let's go by the tonnage perspective. Okay. If historically, if you see, we have been doing close to a million tons of pipe on a year-on-year -year basis. If you okay. see our track record for the last eight years, we have done almost close to a million tons in every year. 
I think so. We should be doing. We should be doing better than this in the next, in this and the coming years as well. Okay. Yeah, okay. So by better, since I asked you earlier as well, what would that mean for your overall margin picture now that commodity price pressures are also easing? You spoke about how it impacted you in quarter one. Uh, full year picture, say two years down the picture, what kind of revenue growth and margins are you expecting? And once your ductile iron business comes on stream, how much will that add on? Right. So, uh, so let's say. On the line pipe side of it, you know, I think so. We should we should expect a growth of at least 10 to 12 percent, if not 15 percent, on a year-on-year -year basis. That's the that's the tailwind what we are seeing there. On the ductile iron side of it, we have just commissioned that facility. Mm. You know, the and ductile iron is also back, is supported by a steel plant, a mini yes. steel plant behind that. And uh, this this is a new setup which has just come on stream, like in July of this year. This year, it's taking its own time in terms of settling down. It's settling down very very nicely. But as you, you know, but there the commodity has played differently. Mm. You know, we have taken particular positions on the commodity side of it when the iron ore and the coals were at a very, mm. very peak mm. price at that point mm. of time because there's a lag time. You know, mm. you, have to, uh, you have to bring those raw materials into your system at least four to six months in advance in order to produce that. Mm. And we got into a very high commodity pricing on that side. So we will see the impact, the negative mm. impact of those commodities coming up in, okay. in, in, in our, in our so one or two quarters. So it was booked at higher prices, but now inventory losses Correct. will be seen? The inventory losses will be How seen. How much have prices fallen since the time you actually booked those uh, prices at higher levels? So they have they have at least got corrected significantly. If you look at the coal side of it, mm. you know, or the coke side of it, which we procured, mm. I think so the corrections have been more than, let's say, $200 a ton. And that's okay. a big number which has mm. happened. And which is, see, in a long run, it is the right thing to happen. Mm. It is a momentary thing which has happened. You know, you have entered into a, a, a commodity at a price. Now the commodities have got, got corrected. So maybe it is the impact of a quarter or two. But then, you know, at this pricing, I think so this business makes a tremendous sense. And okay. looking from a demand perspective, I think so, you know, all business need to be seen from a demand perspective. Mm. The DI business demand is so robust and the way things are happening on the ground here in India mm. in terms of infrastructure development, I think so this journey of next five to seven years is going to be extremely interesting in the DI business. So we're just talking about the near, near, you know, the near and now for the ductile iron business. How much do you think you will be able to, you know, book revenues this year, next year? when things settle down and what's the extent of inventory losses? So let's say we on a capacity side of it we can produce almost close to 400,000 tons of a ductile iron pipe. Right? Okay. That's the capacity what we have mm. put in at this point in time. This year we should be this you know this being the very first year we would see let's say five or six months of a clear operations which will happen. So we are seeing that we should get up get close to around 100,000 tons. The 100, peak is 100,000 okay. tons. That's what we intend to do. And then subsequent years I think so that is where we will try to ramp up from mm. 250,000 tons to 300,000 tons. So that is a roadmap. Any new business which you can get into, mm. it requires incubation, yeah. it requires Correct. a ramp up. And this is a, this is a product which, you, you know, the good part is that there is a demand. Mm. That that's the good part of it, that, you know, there is a demand, a robust demand, and it's going to be there for next five to seven years' time. So it's, a, you know, it will be our interest, it is in our interest to ramp up as quickly as possible and, okay. you know, get a portion of, and the, get a maximum share around that. And the inventory losses? Inventory losses could be there. We are trying to, you know, we are trying to work out. I think so. In the second, by the second quarter, we would see that how, how, how what is the total inventory we have bought and to what extent we should be but able to just adjust. some ballpark. It could be something like close to 100 or crore rupees impact might come. Okay, 100 crore impact. Works. So last question before we let you go, we need to know, I asked you about the margin picture. Considering all that, a ballpark figure, because quarter one was largely, it was, as you said, a washout quarter. Of course, you'll not see those margins. So what is the ballpark figure there? And what kind of volume growth are you anticipating? Because uh, US is going to be one of your biggest drivers in FY24. When will those volumes start showing up? So those volumes have, the US operations have started. We would, we would start seeing their volumes and their sales starting happening in the third quarter and the fourth quarter. Historically, if you look at it, we have been doing almost an EBITDA margin of like close to 10,000 rupees per ton basis, mm. EBITDA, hybrid mm. EBITDA if you look at it. Mm. I think so we should be able to protect that, if not improve upon that. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Mathur, it was a pleasure having you here and speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, that's all about Wellspin Corp, and we'll hope to see you very soon again uh, Thank you. in our studios. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very there. much. Thank you. Uh, appreciate it. Thanks. Joining. Okay, all right. Uh, that's the word coming in from Wellspin Corp. But for now, we'll slip into a short break. On the other side, we'll get you all about stock specific action and a lot of markets as well. Stay tuned.